Number four in the Dole series, a Franklin antenna for ADS-B. It's Sunday morning and I thought I'd have another crack at some more ADS-B hacking. I know I said the last time would be the one but last, but I'm still waiting for some more gear to arrive. And um, in the meantime, I thought I'd, I'd re-look at some antennas. In the past, I'd used a Franklin um, uniform antenna. A Franklin uniform antenna um, is the result of some work by Charles Samuel Franklin. And he actually worked for Marconi and, funny enough, came to South Africa. Um, and set up the first wireless network, uh, military wireless network, in the First Boer War. So some local history there. I had great success previously and I had an open-end Franklin. So I'm going to take some of this wire and bend it and turn it into a Franklin, which is basically a mix of half-wave and quarter-wave, half-wave antennas and quarter-wave stubs. I'm not going to bend this in front of you. I've made one earlier. As I said, country file had started. I was sat with the wire in my hand, so why not build it? It's quite simple and very quick. Um, I don't know if this is going to see this, but basically these are 138 mil half waves and these are 67 mil quarter wave matching stubs and they are four millimeters spaced there and then uh, one centimeter spaced in the center. And then I'm going to clean this off here, solder it on and compare and contrast results. It's a great antenna for our purposes because it's, um, it's very good at low angle um, stuff. And aircraft that are at a great deal of range, an ADS-B will, for all, all practical purposes, be close to the horizon. And that's even at 30 or 40,000 feet. Because of the curvature of the earth, they're very low angle. So there's no point having an antenna that's really good at, uh, at high angle stuff close in. We need low angle, long range. now. The next consideration would be a beam, but um, but that would only then pick up traffic in a given direction. If I could cut down this tree, uh, flatten the hill behind us and flatten the hill over there, I'd get better reception altogether. Um, but anyway, let's see how this works. I'm, I'm confident. So I used, uh, I made a an open-ended one in the past, and it worked very well. This one's close-end. I'll put a link to it below. Heywhatsthat.com is an excellent way to see what range you might expect. The range lines on this in blue showing my expected coverage at 30,000 feet and in yellow 10,000 feet. The Franklin does have a slight directional quality so I've aligned mine to the northeast, my open bit of sky. No point in trying to point it at Lesotho in the west because some trees and a hedge are in the way. I mentioned that I've changed software. I've made the move from Flight Radar 24 to Pi Aware as folks have rated the receiving side of it um, as being better. I believe they both use 1090 though, but on the basis of no science at all, I do think I see a reduction in bad messages using Pi Aware. Just like the Flight Radar 24 setup with a Raspberry Pi, it's simply a matter of downloading an image and putting it into your Pi. It's amazingly simple. Claiming the Pi and linking it to a FlightAware account is a bit of a faff, but worth the effort. You may have read press releases about space-based ADSB from Aerion on SUS News, and FlightAware have teamed with Aerion to provide an interface. In remote parts of the world and the oceans, space-based traffic will be the only way. Back to where I'm pointing my Franklin, you can see the data rate increasing in my dump 1090 interface as the aircraft passes through the area with more gain. Some of you will still be wondering where this ADSB talk is all going. It's multilateration and making more aircraft visible to drone operators and low level. That's the name of the game. And that seems is a team game. I need also to mention Stephen Dade in Australia who said that he'd set up a pie on Facebook about a month ago and that prompted me to look at ADSB again and led me back down this rabbit hole. These videos are all his fault. Now Franklin does outperform a Slim Jim but I'm terrible at making accurate antennas so I'll ask an expert who lives just down the road my mate Vic, and I'll ask him to make one, and I know that his will be spot on, and I'd be very interested to see the difference. To get the theoretical maximum range of about 450 kilometres, I think I'll need a beam, and even then I don't think I have a clear enough view of the sky with a low enough elevation available to see aircraft at range. Other than improved antennas, better and newer USB sticks the order of the day. The one I'm using now is a four-year-old eBay special. The new ones are on the way, and on a very slow boat from China. Right, over to you then Vic, and now put me to shame. 